from USB sticks to SSDs to old school hard drives. In this video, I'll show you how to use external storage with your iPad. Quick note before we get started, in this video, I'm going to focus on iPad models that have a USB-C port. If you have an iPad with a USB-C or Thunderbolt port, by far the most straightforward type of drive to work with is going to be an SSD drive like this one. This is a 2TB SanDisk Extreme NVMe SSD, but there are loads of other options out there too. This model comes with a USB-C to USB-C cable, so to connect it to this iPad Pro, all I need to do is attach the cable and I'm good to go. On the iPad itself, I need to go to the Files app and in the Location section of the sidebar, you can tap right here if you don't see the sidebar by default, it shows up as Extreme SSD. From here, I can access files that are on the SSD, drag and drop files to and or from it. and even move GarageBand project files onto the SSD and then open them from it. To do this, I need to locate the file I want to move. In this case, it's this project in my GarageBand folder that's saved onto the iPad. I can then tap, hold and drag the file onto Extreme SSD in the sidebar. Then, after a few seconds, I can then open the project file from the SSD. Note that GarageBand does throw up this warning when you work on a project that's saved on an external drive. This process works almost identically with thumb drives and external spinning hard drives, with the exception being how you connect them to your iPad. Both the 4TB Toshiba spinning hard drive and 32GB SanDisk Ultra thumb drives I have here have traditional USB-A connectors, and obviously they won't fit into this iPad's USB-C port. You can grab a simple USB-A to USB-C adapter for cheap on Amazon, and it will absolutely get the job done with the thumb drive but if you have a hard drive that requires more power to run than the iPad can provide, you want to consider a better adapter that includes pass-through charging. This Anchor adapter has an HDMI port, a USB-C port that allows for pass-through charging, a USB-A port, two SD card slots, and a headphone jack. To use this hard drive, I just need to attach the adapter to my iPad, attach the iPad's power cable to the USB-C port on the adapter, and then attach the hard drive. If you have a Magic Keyboard, you can actually use the USB-C power input on that to provide power to your iPad and your connected drive without having to worry about an adapter. From here, things work exactly the same as with the SSD. I can move files to and from the hard drive using the Files app, and I can even work on GarageBand project files saved to the hard drive or thumb drive, though you can expect loading and saving to take a bit longer than it does with the SSD. If you've bought a new external drive or want to use an existing one with your iPad, it's important that you have it set up with the correct format. You can erase and format a drive from the iPad itself, and the process is actually really straightforward. Attach your drive to your iPad, open the Files app, then in the Location section of the sidebar, press and hold on your attached external drive. In the menu that pops up, hit Erase. Now, obviously, when you do this, it will delete absolutely everything that you may currently have on that drive. In the next menu, you can choose to rename your drive and select from three formats that the drive will use once erased. The APFS, or Apple File System, is the one to go for if you only ever plan to use your external drive with Apple gear like Macs, iPads, iPhones, etc. 
If you plan to use the drive with a mix of Apple devices and devices on other platforms like a Windows PC, for example, then select the XFAT option. MS-DOS FAT can't be used on drives larger than 4GB, so you probably won't want to select this option at all, really. Hit Erase and your drive will be wiped and reformatted using the format you've selected. You'll find links to all the gear mentioned in this video in the description below. And if you could give that like button a good hard slap on your way past, I'd really appreciate it. And for more info on hooking up your music production gear to your iPad, watch this next.